What's up everybody? Today I want to do a really cool video that I had an idea for. I've done some videos in the past about basically picking parts for servers and how to get and find the best parts to select uh, things for your server, but I never actually showed a video of like, hey, if I was to build a server, what would I build? So in fact, I didn't just build one server, I built three servers for you guys to show you kind of an idea of where I would be and what I would do today. So we're gonna be using this cool site called PCPartPicker.com to actually choose our parts. And the nice thing about this is, I'm gonna save this list like right here. I can copy this link. And uh, for that, I'm gonna paste that in the video description. You can come back and actually get to this list and pick and choose these parts if you want. Buy these exact parts, rip this thing apart. It doesn't matter, it's your choice. I just wanna show you guys what I did and what kind of options we have here. So for me personally, jumping right into this, I'm a huge fan of the lower power, kind of mid-range CPUs. And again, the reason for this is, if you haven't seen my other videos, you do not need 14th gen, like K-bind parts to run your server. In fact, your server is probably gonna sit at idle like 90 something percent of the time. You can do this with very low power CPUs. You do not need super high end CPUs. Do not waste your money on them. Also do not waste your money on these huge, really cool liquid cooling solutions. Those are great for gaming PCs, but servers just don't do that, man. So my first part that I picked was the CPU that I use in all of my servers, the i310105. And with stock cooling, this CPU cooler brand new from Amazon is $93 for the CPU and the built-in cooler. I use this on three servers, I think, in my house right now. They're fine. They work just what, just great. This is what I went with. I went with a matching motherboard. I found this ASRock B560M ITX motherboard. The nice thing about PC Part Picker is when you come through here and you start selecting parts, it's going to filter your parts based on your previous choice. So if you've never used this before, when I first started by selecting my CPU, when I clicked on select the motherboard, I was only shown motherboards that are compatible with the CPU. Because the CPU is pretty old, none of these are in stock anywhere. I just needed a name of a motherboard. So I went out and I found this ASRock right here. And then I went to eBay and I found that exact motherboard for $119. So I thought that was a really cool and great pickup. This is a brand new motherboard. Uh, this reviewer has 97% positive ratings. This is gonna be a legit person. I'm not gonna get ripped off here. Someone with, 90, someone with 711 uh, reviews at 97% positive probably isn't gonna be the type of dude to rip me off. So this is probably a pretty decent pick. It's a brand new board. Um, and it's only 120 bucks, so that worked out pretty well. And I added the price right here so you can see it. So now I've got a CPU and a motherboard. I went and just got some cheap memory for it. This is Team Group T-Force Vulcan. I've actually used this memory in, some my, in my current TrueNOS server. It's totally fine. Do not think you need the RGB crap that a lot of kids are doing these days, man. I'm an old man. I do not do any of the RGB stuff. This is a pretty low level build, and this is gonna be my ITX build. So I'm gonna do again three builds, an ITX build, an MATX build, and a full on ATX build. This is gonna be like my sits in the living room kind of build that's kind of like low profile. So uh, speaking of low profile, let's talk about the case. This is the case I'm gonna be building in. This is the Thermaltake Core V1. The reason I like this case is when you see the inside of it, uh, you're going to see here we have space not only for ATX power supply, we also have space for hard drives in here, which is rare in ITX cases. This is only a $60 case. It's pretty amazing that they jam this much stuff in here in this tiny little cube. The motherboard sits flat right here, and we have all this extra space above it. And then down here, we have spaces for drives and ATX power supplies and things like that. So this is my ITX case that I'm going to build in. It's going to be a pretty awesome little server case. So I picked that case down there, and here's what I'm gonna fill it with. I went over to server part deals. Now, mind you, if you're looking for hard drives, always go use, because your hard drive's gonna fail eventually. Do not spend a lot of money on hard drives. Your goal is to be to spend about $10 per terabyte. I found these 12s on server part deals right here. Hey guys, I'm actually doing an amendment to a part of this video. I know in this video I said, or this part of the video, I said we were gonna use a different hard drive. I made a mistake and they were using SAS hard drives in this case. We need SATA for this build. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of clip this in uh, pretty ugly probably to the YouTube video so that this is the actual drive we're gonna use. So when I come back and I reference the other drive, the 12, this is actually a Seagate 14 terabyte. It's about the same price, so we're getting a little bit more space, but this has got the SATA interface we need that'll actually plug into our motherboard. So just be careful of that because I just made that mistake on this video where I wasn't paying attention and I ended up with SATA, SAS drives and I need SATA. So this will be the hard drive that we actually use for this build cheapest SSD I could find just for a boot drive. The reason for that is it does not matter. If the boot drive takes a dump on TrueNAS, as long as you've got your configuration file backed up, you can run to any Best Buy and pick up the cheapest SS, cheapest and smallest SSD you can and just put your config file back on there and you're up and running in five minutes. No big deal. 
Uh, I found another cheap semi-modular power supply because again, power supplies don't really go bad all that often. Uh, I basically just needed it to be powerful enough to power the motherboard, the CPU, and three of these drives should not be a whole lot of problems here. Our estimated wattage is 175. This is a 650. The reason I didn't go with something smaller is because this is I wanted to, I wanted a little bit more of a certification here. So I went for 80 plus gold and semi-modular. They didn't even make this in anything smaller than that. I'm sure if you guys shop around, you could probably find it better. But again, it was $55. This whole cost of this build, where is the cost down here, is 677. So we're really not breaking the bank and this is mostly new parts. In fact, the only used parts in this are the hard drives themselves and the motherboard. Everything else here is brand new and I probably wouldn't even do this brand new. I'd probably eBay this part for like 50 bucks, honestly. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a pretty straightforward build and I like it for ITX. I like the form factor of it being small in this little case like here. I, I, I'd run those two 12 terabyte drives in RAID 1, so I've got nice redundant storage there. I've got, a, I've got a SSD to boot off of, so it's not gonna be slow. Like, this is gonna work. This is gonna work just fine. The CPU here is not slow. The motherboard is not terrible at all. So, I mean, this is a great, great little build to get started on. So this is my ITX build for those who are just like, hey, I want something small to tuck under my desk that isn't gonna make me deaf to be in the same room with it. So I like this for ITX. Let's move on to something a little bit bigger. Okay, on to build number two. This is gonna be kind of a mid-size build. It's gonna be built off the MATX uh, motherboard size because we can do more with that. With the ITX, we don't have the option to do adding cards. We only get two slots for memory and we have limited options when it comes to expansion. And I, even though that's a great form factor, it, it kind of limits where you can go with it. I love MATX because you can really get some, some legs underneath it if you go the right way. So here's what I built. It's gonna have a lot of the same parts we saw last time. It's got the i310105 here. I found this Asus Prime B560 motherboard on eBay for uh, about one at $89 plus shipping. I think it's $6. Uh, this seller's got 305 reviews with 100% positive, so we're not going to get ripped off. This thing is, in fact, working. This is the correct motherboard. Uh, so we have, see here some differences that we have the options for. Now, first off, I don't care about this plate. What I care most about is the fact that these pins are okay, and then I see two different slots here for PCI Express expansion. The reason for that is I want to really start getting some transcode action going on here. With the last build, we could use the CPU for onboard transcoding, but I want to actually have a dedicated GPU for transcoding, or if you guys want to do like a more powerful uh, GPU for like AI or any kind of workload like that, you have the option for that in this build with a little bit more memory, just a little bit more space to kind of grow. So what I decided to do is take this chip on that board with the same memory we had last time, the same single hard drive we had last time, but this time we're going to slam four 16 terabyte Western Digital Ultra Stars in there. I found these here on server part deals, they're just over $10 a terabyte. So they're right about what I want to pay. I'd love to pay 159, but they're just $10 over that. It's not a terrible thing. The one thing that makes me a little nervous is the power on hours are high, but again, for 169 a drive, if one of these dies, it's not a big deal because I'd run these either in a mirrored pair or probably a RAID Z1. I'm not super concerned about the drives dying because I'm going to have some kind of RAID configuration. This is going to give me a little bit of dependability and give me some time to find a replacement if I need to. This price is very, very good for drives this size. So this, again, crappy boot drive, which doesn't really matter for these things. And again, I want to find this. This is what I'm using right now in my actual TrueNOS build. I found a, I have a Quadro P500, P400. I got mine for like 50 bucks off eBay. Dude, I found this one on eBay right now for $27 from a dude with 23,000 reviews at 99% positive. This dude is pretty much a perfect seller. If he tells me this card is working and it is, use clean tested working poles. This is a good card. I love this card. It gives me at least four, about four 4K tr simultaneous transcode streams for my MB server. Um, I like it a lot. I think it's pretty amazing. This is a really great entry level card. Does not require any PCI, any power from the, um, the ATX power supply. This pulls all its power right through the PCI Express slot on the motherboard. So that's also really great. It's just less wiring for me. So this is my dedicated transcode I use right now. I love it. I will tell you it's completely compatible with TrueNOS versions going all the way back to like Bluefin. So no matter what version of TrueNOS you have, this is 100% compatible, I promise you. So that's the transcode card that I picked. This is the case that I picked. This is a very interesting case. If you've never heard of Fractal or if you're not familiar with the Note 804, this is the case is the stuff of legend and I'll show you why. Uh, let's come over here. You'll see here, it's, picture, it's split into two different sections. It's basically a perfect cube. And on one section, we have the 
on oh, this section right here that's facing me, we have the power supply which goes in here and we have all the hard drive spacing plus fans. And on the other side, we have the spot for the motherboards. This is really great. There's a lot of airflow in this case. And look at all of these hard drives expansions. So, I mean, we have a huge amount of opportunity here. It was that I only picked four uh, 3.5 inches and a single 2.5 inch SSD. You can go up to eight drives inside this thing. So if you were definitely like, man, I want to slam this thing full of storage, you got all the space in the world to make that happen. It's an extremely beautiful case, very affordable. This is the motherboard side here. You can see here, these are the PCI slots. So I mean, you can see all the cooling options you have, all the hard drive options. This is just an amazing, amazing case. I like it so much. This is, like I said, it's about twice the size of the ITX case, but because of the expandability options we have, I'll tell you what, you'd be pretty hard pressed to say, I need more than this. I need more than eight hard drives and two different PCI Express slots for video cards. Like that's, you're, you're doing a lot if that's the case, but this is a really great case. And I found this again for I think $125 brand new off of B&H, well at least PC Park Picker did. I had to go with a different power supply this time. The reason was because the last power supply, actually threw a warning up here, you'll see the compatibility is fine, but the last um, power supply did not have enough SATA power for all these drives. And if I keep scrolling down here, you'll actually see the motherboard usage as well as the CPU, uh, the power supply usage here. So this is gonna show me all the SATA ports. I have six of them off the motherboard. Uh, and here the power supply connector usage, you'll see here, I have about one extra power supply for one extra drive off of this single um, power supply. So if I want to go more than another, if I want to go another drive, for example, that would be all my SATA power. I'd have to either go to a different uh, power supply or I'd have to find some Molex to SATA adapters or something like that. So this shows me, this is really cool. One of the cool things about PC Park Picker down here too, case drive bay usage. So I've got what all this interior spots up to, tw it's got what, 10 3.5s, an exterior five and a quarter, and two more 2.5 inch internals. So we have got so much space down here. You could also see the uh, price history of all the parts. I'm pretty much on the low side for all of my parts. So this is a really amazing build. This came out to 1140. Again, most of this is brand new, except for some of these drives. Well, I said that half this is brand new, but um, that's a pretty good price if you've never had a server before. And all of a sudden you're going to go to what 64 terabytes of storage 32 gigs of memory and a dedicated gpu for transcode yeah that's a pretty serious step forward from nothing so again this is a really i love this kind of tier this is the mid tier what i would call it and it's very very i think approachable and definitely gives you tons of space for uh expansion in the future if you really want to get pretty crazy with this but this is my micro atx build next we're gonna go take a look at the big atx full tower like throw everything at it build Okay, last but certainly not least is going to be our kind of swing for the fences, full tower ATX build. Now, again, I'm using the same CPU, CPU cooler I was before. The reason for that is, again, this is going to sit idle most of the time. If you want to go with way more cores, you can go with an AMD if you want to do something like that, if you're going to be doing a ton of virtualization. But I'll be honest with you, I don't really do a ton of VM work there. And I think LXCs, especially with TrueNOS Fangtooth, are the way going forward. So I'm trying to stay away from doing something that's got like six, eight, or ten cores. Because you're going to pay a lot of money for it and not really get a whole lot out of it. Uh, the motherboard, I kind of definitely went bigger here. You don't have to. I'm going to show you two motherboards here. I went for this AR, uh, Asus ROG Maximus. The reason I did this is because this has the onboard 10 gigabit networking. That's really cool. That's what I use in my server. If you wanted to save some money, you could just go with the Z490 and add in um, a 10 gigabit networking card. This is going to be challenging here, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute, especially when we get onto more parts. But... I would recommend going for onboard 10 gigabit networking. I kind of like that more, especially for compatibility purposes. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could always do this with the add-in 10 gigabit networking card and save yourself probably close to $100 on this build. But this Maximus is the one that I put in here. I think this is a great, great motherboard. It's got tons of options, power. Look at these three single LSI, uh, these three PSI e e expansion slots four memory slots. This board is in great shape. I found it for $200 off eBay. This is an absolute steal. I think this is a great, great buy. Uh, after that, I went, this, I went up the memory this time to 64 gigabytes by two by 32. If you want to fill all four slots and do another set of these, again, they're about 90 bucks a piece. So another $90 will get you up to 128 and fill all those slots up. Storage. I, I, I went big here. Six Sega Exos 18, 18 terabyte drives. This is where I found them on server part deals. Uh, they're a little bit more. I'd like to pay about 180 for them at $10 a terabyte. They're about 200, so they're a little bit higher than I'd like them to be. A little high in the power on hours as well. Like seen closer to 10,000, maybe 15 at the most, but that's okay. These are in pretty. These are these are great great drives. I use Seagate 
Iron Wolves, I love them a lot. Some people really have a love-hate relationship with Exos. They like the Western Digitals more. Uh, I, I find no issues with Exos at all. I will tell you with this many drives, do not be in the same room as this build. It's going to be loud. This is something you put in another room. You do not put this underneath your desk. Not at all. Six of those right there. And I added a second of those second uh, those Patriot Burst Elite drives. So you can do a raid one when it comes to your boot, just in case one of them fails. When it comes to this array, I'm probably doing a raid Z2. It's going to give me about 64 terabytes of raw capacity. Um, and then usable underneath that, maybe just under 60 terabytes or so. So, I mean, if you're filling up 60 terabytes, like my hat's off to you, just keep throwing drives at this. And the reason we can keep throwing drives at this because our case is gonna be the Fractal uh, Define R5. If you've never heard of this case, this case is pretty storied and this is why. Just straight racks full of hard drive space here. And you can rip these two out here and do even more stuff. This has got some expansion on it. This is an adult case. So it's got tons of room for all the PCI Express cards, great cooling. Obviously, a lot of hard drive space here to work with, plus space on the backside for the 2.5 inch. These are these are really cool cases, man. The Fractal Define R5 is a pretty much like staple in the home lab community. If you just want to rack this thing full of drives, it'll hold everything, no questions asked. Uh, coming down here, I decided to go big in the video card. I went with the 5070. The 5070 is sitting in a really nice sweet spot um, financially right now, <laughs> fiscally, compared to everything else. To go up to the 5080 is like 1200. It's almost double the price of this to go up one step. The 5070 is great. I thought about AI workloads running local LLMs and things like that. So I'm like, man, I want to step up from the Quadro and really go into something big when it comes to a video card that can do some serious LLMs. Uh, I think this is a great, great buy right now. At the time this video was recorded, this was recorded April 25th. The prices may have changed long by the time you see this video, but at the time, you can see here, 604 for this card is great. I actually saw this card on sale for in the low fives at Micro Center right near my place, and I almost left my house to go get it because on eBay, they're going for like 675. I could have easily bought it and flipped it, but I'm not going to be that guy. Anyway, um, power supply here. I want the bigger power supply because we've got to fill a whole lot more. Uh, drives here. So this is not $90. It's a full modular gold certified thermal take tough power, great power supply. And I think that covers everything up here. There's one more additional part I have to show you and you'll see here that there's a compatibility problem. And that's the fact that I do not have enough SATA on board to, for these hard drives. And of course, no motherboard once you start getting up here is going to have that much SATA on board. So what we need to do is we need to add a SATA card. So you're going to want to go ahead and go to eBay and find one of these. This is an LS. This is the exact same one that I use in my uh, TrueNOS build. So I'm, I'm guaranteeing compatibility. I've had this card for a long time now. It's very simple. You just plug it in. Uh, these forward breakout cables, one of these sides go to these little plugs here on this mother on this little card here. Uh, this goes in one of the full PCI slots. And then these four can go right into the SAS. When we look at this whole thing here, um, there's plenty of space on all these other things. You see there's tons of space here on the drive. There's tons of space here on the power supply. And once we do that HBA, we're going to have six on board plus eight more slots. It's going to be a total of 14 SATO connection ports for data that we can use for hard drive. So yeah, you're going to run out of space before you run out of hard drive uh, plugs. Uh, the cost for this is, of course, uh, more expensive, $2,500. The bulk of this cost is the fact that we're going six, 1,200 of this is in hard drives alone. So if you take $1,200 off this, this is a $1,200 $1, build without storage. And mind you, this has got a 5070 in it. So that's this is an aggressive build, like 10 gigabit onboard networking. This is like a, I want to build a server that's not going to be overpowered or underpowered for probably the next 10 to 15 years. This has got some life to it. So I think this is I think this is a big deal, but there's some guys out here gonna watch this video and say, hey, that's what I wanna do. I wanna put this in the basement right next to the router, run that Cat 6E 10 gig, um, yeah, you know, land, uh, 10 gig land networking, 10 gig base T, and that's what they're gonna do. And I'm like, man, my hat is off to you. I hope you guys have a great time building this. I'm hoping in the future to make some videos about building, like physically putting these parts together. On the webs on the wiki right now, I linked to one of Linus Tech Tips video on just server construction or PC construction. I think it's a great video, but I wanna start doing stuff myself. So look for that in the future. Uh, in the meantime, please like and subscribe to this channel. Please leave me comments in the in the comment board below. I know you guys are probably going to pick apart my decisions. That's great. I'd love to have a discussion with you. If you ever want to have a longer discussion, definitely hit us up on Discord. Uh, and please, if you want to thank me personally, buy me a coffee.